Tonight's story is called Quest for the Sleep Amulet and unfolds in a faraway land of magic and myth, fairies and fantasy, wizardry and wonder. So snuggle up under your blankets and prepare for a wonderful night of sleep. Once you're all settled in, close your eyes. A young woman named Jade sat cross-legged at the shoreline of a crystalline lake, watching a small, moored rowboat bob gently in the water. It was late afternoon, the sun beginning its slow descent across the sky to kiss a distant, snow-capped mountain range. Not a single cloud was in sight. Nearby, an ice-blue mountain stream flowed into the lake's waters, casting a cadence of ripples across its calm surface. It was beautiful. Brow furrowed, Jade dug through her satchel. She had dressed for the winter's coming frost, wrapping herself in a cozy wool cloak, thick socks, and soft leather boots. Despite the toasty attire, her hands were chilly, her fingertips red with cold. Luckily, she had just the thing tucked away in her knapsack. A pair of maroon gloves, hand-knit by her teacher, the wizard. He was the reason she found herself here. Across the water, an ancient forest grew its vast trees stirring as Jade watched. Humans hadn't graced this ethereal place for centuries, but she knew that she was welcome. The very land seemed to sense her presence. The lake rippled with a light breeze, carrying rich scents of pine, cedar, and fir from across the water. Clusters of wildflowers turned their bright faces to see her, the only human they would ever encounter. Olive frogs perched on lily pads, riveting in curiosity. It was no secret, then, the reason that she was here. The breeze coiled around Jade like a playful cat, whispering sweet comforts to affirm her thoughts. Carry on, child, it murmured. The land knows what you seek. The sleep amulet awaits. The sleep amulet. Legend said that the enchanted pendant would grant its wearer a blissful, tranquil slumber, restful and safe, comfortable and warm. Jade had heard of it, of course, but only in childhood stories whispers at bedtime, half-forgotten dreams before sunrise. Find the sleep amulet, the tales promised, and you would never lie awake again. She pulled the gloves from her knapsack, drawing them over her chapped hands. Warmth flooded her entire body, thawing the crest of her nose to the tips of her toes. Jade sighed in pleasure, the wizard had clearly cast a spell on them. She had protested when he packed her bag, telling him she didn't need the gloves. Warmth is its own type of magic, he had told her, his tired eyes twinkling. Trust me. As always, he was right. It was only later that she found the peculiar objects he had hidden in her satchel a golden coin engraved with a silvery crescent moon. The maroon gloves enchanted to keep her warm. Oddest of all, the wizard's silver-rimmed spectacles tucked into a softened leather case for safekeeping. Why he had given them to her, she didn't yet know, but she didn't doubt that he knew how to take care of her. Now it was her turn to take care of him. 
The man simply couldn't sleep. The two of them had tried every enchantment they knew, and nothing had worked. She had whispered incantations under the bright moon, brewing fragrant chamomile and fresh peppermint, sticky sweet rose petals and essence of lily. When she drifted off in her cozy four-poster bed, she listened to him tinker with spell upon spell in his workroom, murmuring complex magics and ancient secret charms. Patting down the cool stone hall the next morning, she found him still bent over his work table, heavy-eyed and drowsy, greeting her with a yawn and a smile. Then they found the map. It was tucked away in the deep cavern of a kind-hearted dragon who had heard of the wizard's plight. Been in my treasure hoard for centuries, the dragon had said earnestly, offering them the gold-embossed scroll in a manicured paw. I like a nice catnap myself. Please, take it. We all deserve a restful sleep. The map was time-worn and dusty, hidden for eons. Its delicate illustrations revealed a winding, long-forgotten path through unchartered lands, enchanted lakes, and otherworldly forests that no human had visited in centuries. First, the Dream Lake, a legend in and of itself, and the very waters where she now stood. Then, the Story Grove, a spellbinding woodland library, and rumored home of the fairies. That was where she would find the sleep amulet. And so Jade's quest began. The wizard hadn't wanted her to go, but she dismissed his protests with an easy hug. He was her sleepy sorcerer, her grandfather in everything but lineage. He had taught her how to wield magic, how to speak the language of the stars, how to grow sweet peas and dahlias by moonlight. She taught him, too, how to braid his waist-long beard, how to cook a delicious turkey and potato soup, how to savor the quiet things in life, like a songbird's melody or the sweetness of wild cherries. I'll retrieve it for you. She thought, dusting herself off as she stood. I promise. The dream lake waited patiently, lapping at her feet. She clambered into the rowboat and pushed off the lake's sandy bottom. Gliding across the water, she dipped the oar in and out, in and out, paddling for the forest that called to her. As a child, she had listened to old folk tales of the Dream Lake, imagining that she floated in its cool waters as she drifted to sleep. Wish upon a gold coin, the tale said, and the lake would take care of you, imbue your mind with the most perfect dream, uniquely and forever yours. Humans had pilgrimage to this fairy spot their coins and dreams in hand. The lake had granted every single one their dreamy wishes. Peering through the water, she smiled. There at the lake's bottom lay hundreds of gold coins, sparkling in the fading sunlight. Jade called on her magic. She wanted to see their dreams. Images built in her mind's eye gently fading in and out of focus. A young, red-headed man slept in creamy clouds, the sky around him fading into a tangerine sunset. An elderly, plump woman with kind eyes laid on a crested hilltop, drowsily watching stars shoot across the galaxies above. A child barely out of diapers, nuzzled her beloved doll, her mother singing her to sleep with a soft lullaby. Reaching into her satchel, Jade felt the cool metal of a gold coin 
and smiled with delight. Of course, the wizard had wanted her to make a wish in the dream lake. Closing her eyes, she imagined her four-poster bed. It was so cozy with its down blankets and fluffy pillows. Sometimes, a friendly owl visited her window and hooted a gentle bird lullaby as she slept. Jade couldn't wait to return. She flipped the coin into the water, watching it splash and sink to join the other wishes. She had no doubt it would come true. As she rode, she dipped her fingers into the cool water, gently rippling the surface. She reached the other side of the lake in short measure, disembarking on the sandy shore in front of the ancient forest. Leaving the lake behind, Jade walked along the winding path. The land was changing, the lake shore giving way to a forest. The air was filled with the scent of rich soil, heavy moss, and the fresh aroma of pine needles. What will this story grove be like? She wondered, casting her thoughts ahead. She had already traveled across the dream lake, making a wish on its legendary shore. Whatever was in store, Jade knew she would enjoy it. Looking ahead, a thick wall of trees rose, extending as far as the eye could see. The path led straight to it. With a thrill, Jade realized she had arrived at the map's next landmark, the Story Grove. There she stood at the Story Grove's gate, palms resting on the lustrous oak latch, awed at the magnificent sight before her. Trees of every imaginable species grew in harmony with one another twining their boughs to create an organic enclosure. Cedar and sweet chestnut wove age-old branches together, friends until the end of time. Hawthorn and juniper grew small offshoots, shyly twining new branches into wreaths of bright red berries. Aspen and alder, the youths of the bunch, stretched their crowns above the grove's collective canopy to taste the fading sunlight. Above the gate, a vast redwood grew knots of sprigs, the tiny branchlets arching and curling to form five words. Enter those who seek knowledge. Jade lifted the latch, took a deep breath, and stepped into the story grove. She stood in an immense alcove framed by tree trunks, the air piney and fresh. Tree halls branched from the space, each passage aligned to the brim with hundreds of books, perhaps thousands, each tome tucked away safely among the nooks and crannies of the magical grove. Nearby, a young elm held a collection of fairy tales, its cover illustrated with fairies and pixies, sprites and nymphs. There, a magnificent Douglas fir was home to a book of poetry, its pages dipped in raw gold. A little further, a wise yew tree promised the full volumes of a long-gone elven witch magic spells to bake the perfect loaf of bread. The Story Grove was home to any book Jade could imagine, and more. A light flutter sounded above her head, the tiny thrum of wings. Jade looked up and sighed in wonder. The canopy was alight with hundreds of fairies, their voices melodious and bright, as they took her in. The treetops had shaped themselves into fairy homes, complete with rounded sitting rooms, little kitchens, and cozy beds 
the size of Jade's hand. There was even a small vegetable garden tucked into a knotted cedar hollow, complete with white picket fence, pinprick tomatoes, and butternut squash the size of Jade's freckles. The fairies had strung drawbridges from house to home. As she watched, two skipped along the swinging passages, lighting miniature amber lanterns as they went. A fairy dressed in a stately overcoat fluttered down to face level. Welcome, he said, hovering near her nose. His voice was silvery and sweet. I am the mayor of Story Grove, and we are its caretakers. We haven't had visitors in a long time, as long as I can remember. Care for some tea? A fairy in a mustard apron waved from a miniature kitchen a tiny tea kettle in her hands. I'd love some tea, Jade replied, eyeing the size of the kettle. But I've come a long way, and I still must return. The fairies gathered to listen, hovering gently in the glowing lamplight. We heard of you on the breeze, the mayor said, and the others chirped in agreement. We know what you seek. We hear the trees whisper about you. Still, tell us. I seek a good night's slumber, Jade replied. I seek the sleep amulet. So you do, the mayor said, dancing closer to Jade's face. He lay a tiny hand on her nose. The wizard is a friend to our people and a friend to all. Not to worry, young sorceress. The story grove will help. Without further ado, the fairies took wing. Jade sneezed. Glancing down, she laughed with delight. The mayor had sprinkled her with fairy dust, a special kind of magic that allowed humans to fly. The mayor gestured for her to follow, fairies with glowing lanterns hovering around her. Slowly, she floated up, boots hovering off the carpet of pine needles, she felt weightless, as if she were buoyed by a gentle breeze. Together, Jade and the fairies flew deeper into the story grove. They glided through a cedar path lined with ancient books, a cavernous mulberry hall dedicated to children's tales, a room hollowed from a single maple tree, so many cozy nooks and crannies that Jade lost count. And oh, the magic of it. There she was, flying among never-ending stories with the fairies, the moon rising above Story Grove as they traveled. It was a dream come true. Finally, the fairies slowed. They had reached a snug niche set deep into a sequoia tree, the hideaway complete with a cushion and warm blanket for reading. The sequoia was home to one tome only, the Sleep Amulet Spellbook. Jade took a deep breath and lifted the book from its branch. The parchment was frayed with time. The book's cover was gold embossed and intricate, depicting the amulet in strokes of satiny ink. The pendant was studded with magical gemstones, Charmed to help the wearer fall into a deep sleep. Smoky quartz to inspire lovely dreams. Rainbow obsidian to free the imagination. Light amethyst to ground the sleeper in the land of dreams. The jewels were encircled by a crescent moon, and the amulet's chain was braided and intricate. Three golden threads twined together in an endless, elegant pattern. I found it, Jade thought, tingling with delight. She ran her fingers down the book's spine. Now, I only have to cast the spell to give the wizard a good night's sleep. Opening the book, she paused. The script inside was written in a cipher she didn't understand. 
Hieroglyphs and runes sat dully on the page. She had never known a language that resembled the words in front of her. She looked at the fairies, hopefully. The mayor landed on the open book and examined the hieroglyphs, murmuring under his breath. Finally, he straightened, adjusting his overcoat. I've never seen the like, he said. My apologies, young sorceress. The fairies cannot help here. Jade closed her eyes to think. She was so close. Then it came to her. The wizard's silver-rimmed spectacles were still tucked safely in her satchel. He had always said there was a special power in genuine sight, in looking past the surface to behold the true nature of things. She nodded to herself and rummaged through her satchel. With a deep breath, she placed the silver-rimmed spectacles on her nose, peering at the spell book's pages. The hieroglyphs began to glow and shift, ink reshaping itself into a single, simple spell. Jade fixed the wizard in her thoughts and chanted, Giver of slumber, giver of sleep, giver of dreams and all things deep. Amulet, please, I ask for his rest. Earth and sky, may his slumber be blessed. As she uttered the last incantation, a comforting weight rested on her neck. It was the amulet, warm against her skin. She had successfully retrieved it. Jade sat on the cushion deep within the story grove, listening to the croon of crickets. She was sleepy, she realized. It had been a long and lovely quest, and it seemed the amulet was already working its magic. I have to get back, she mumbled, yawning. I have to give the amulet to the wizard. The mayor lay his tiny hand on her nose once more. Not to worry, young sorceress, he said reassuringly. We'll fly you back with fairy dust. It's high time we have a cup of tea with the wizard, anyhow. One by one, the fairies took turns, sprinkling her with glittery, magical dust. She began to rise, floating by magic deep within the story grove. Slowly, the canopy above her shifted, letting her rise under the moon's glow. Jade rose above the treetops, basking in the starlight. She was ready to go home. Together, the fairies guided her way. As they flew under the stars, the fairies thrilled with contentment. Jade closed her eyes fixing both the story grove and dream lake in her memory. She knew she would return one day. The trip took no time at all. It seemed that the wizard had expected their return, preparing a platter of cheese, fruit, and bread. A fire crackled in the hearth, casting drowsy shadows across the thick rug. He had placed two pairs of plush slippers in front of the fireplace, one for him and one for her. A steaming pot of chamomile tea had nearly come to a boil on the grate, the wizard's favorite. Two clay mugs sat empty on the workshop table, seemingly waiting. Beside them, the wizard had set up dainty tea mugs, a miniature table and chairs, and tiny beds for the fairies to rest. The wizard sat in his chintz armchair, gazing into the fire as he knitted what appeared to be a pair of thick wool socks. Hello, my dear, he said, his twinkling eyes on the pearl loop stitch in his hands. I thought I sensed you. Jade draped the sleep amulet over the wizard's neck smiling as he sighed in relief. Oh, I'll have lovely dreams tonight, he said. Tea, Mayor? The Mayor picked up his teacup, 
waiting for it to be filled. The rest of the fairies followed suit, giggling. The wizard chuckled and poured everyone a full steaming mug. Jade enveloped him in a tight hug. Thank you for the spectacles and for everything, she whispered into his beard. He hugged her back. Together, they whiled the rest of the evening away, sipping chamomile tea until the pot was empty. Outside a window, an owl hooted a sweet hello, welcoming Jade home. The moon shone brightly, Jade's nighttime dahlias blooming under its luminescence. All was well. When they finished their tea, Jade tiptoed out of the wizard's workroom and made her way down the long stone hallway. Sinking into her four-poster bed, she snuggled up under her down blanket and bid the moon a soft good night. Closing her eyes, she listened for the wizard's tinkering, waiting to hear the whisper of spells. Instead, she heard a light snore. The wizard was sound asleep. Smiling, Jade let sleep overtake her. On this note, our story ends. Good night and sweet dreams. <laughs>